Jackson Chapel and all that is watching with us on Facebook Live. This is the, a day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Will you please bow your head for a moment of prayer? Dear Lord, thank you for my lying down last night and our early rising this morning. Realizing that you didn't have to do it, but I'm so glad that you did. Lord, today is a special day for me. Um, my mom celebrated, is celebrating 74 years of life. And Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, we're trusting in you and um, all that you're going to do for her and for us too. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Amen. Um, today, um, Sunday school is worth risking our lives. And the Bible, I mean, devotional reading is Isaiah 43, 1 through 7. But now, but now, thus said the Lord, that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior, I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Even everyone that is called by thy name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yes, I have made him. That's the even ending of the word. I'm talking about Say good morning again to all of you. It's another day that God has allowed us to be a part of, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Our lesson today is worth risking our life. Our Sunday school commentary subject was faith and the fiery furnace. <clears throat> key verse, key text. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake. And said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servant that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own. Daniel 3 28. We're still dealing with faith that pleases. God. The righteous live by faith. All of our subjects have been dealing with faith. <clears throat> I told Brother All last week when he was teaching, I said, you, you had to go back several chapters, didn't you? He said, yeah, I'm going all the way back. <laughs> and I got looking at this lesson today, and today's lesson starts in the middle of chapter 3 of Daniel. And I said, there we go. Got to look at Brother Oil. I had to go back to it. For a while, I had to go back to the first chapter. Since our lesson starts in the middle of the third chapter. So I'm going to go back and we're going to discuss a little stuff. And by the time we get to the lesson check, we may be out of time. <laughs> but we still within the lesson. <clears throat> in 
chapter 1 of Daniel, which is not in our subject text today. In, in chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, within the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged him. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, and some of the oracles of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his gods. And he brought the articles into the treasure house of his God. So Brother All, last week talking about Isaiah prophesying. Isaiah prophesying that, you know, God is not going to keep putting up with all this. He, he preached some judgment. But when he got over to the 40th chapter, Isaiah started preaching some comfort. He's going to bring you out. But you're going, you're going into Babylon. But God's going to bring you out. Amen. Today's text is that they, they're in Babylon. <laughs> so maybe we, we may ought to heed some warning sometime. The prophet was warning them. But Daniel, King Nebuchadnezzar went in. And, and Robert, you also said that he, Hezekiah, showed them all the stuff in the temple. You see, in this text, they began to take it to Babylon. Oh, that's so. By telling the stories of the prophet Daniel and his associates, the book of Daniel depicts Jewish life in a foreign land. A series of deportations from Judah by the Babylonians began in 605 B.C. These continued until Judah fell in 586 B.C. Among the deported were talented young men selected for their fitness for service to the Babylonian king. So out of that, all these deportations, they took some young men, some fitted men, they want you in the king's service. I'll talk about Brother Cable, Brother Robert, all of them. Then I said, nah, they don't want Robert. <laughs> I can't pick on the name in there. Why is it? Why but they pick the talent from here, and they start taking them out. They can't. They, they say they'll leave you. They get somebody. Else. They get somebody. Else. They leave me. They ain't good for nothing. So they took these these young men. Among them was Dan. Amen. They they deported them. Took them into battle. Now they took Daniel, Hananiah, Michelle. Nazareth took him in the battle. Yeah. Okay. Now, they were about, they had various in there. They were about 15, 16, 17 years old. You know what I mean? When they took him into Babylon. And they were in Babylon, Brother Wyatt, his whole life. Daniel. He come out. He's in, Bab he's in Babylon his whole life. Brother Wyatt been teaching on purpose. And I said, so what was the purpose? And we've been on purpose for a while in Bible study. What was the purpose? These young men being deported. And they was God-fearing young men. Sorry. But they was deported. We come up to one conclusion in purpose is that our purpose is to glorify God. Amen. Amen. That's our purpose. Right. It don't make any difference where you are right. or what the circumstances is. That's right. It's your purpose in life mm -hmm. is to glorify God. Amen. That's, Amen. Right. That's, your, that's your purpose. Mm -hmm. And Brother All said when he finished last week, he still been told up, I'm not compromising anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, I, I see in these young men, they're they not going to come to us. Right. We need to make up our mind. Yeah. I, I, our young musician said, I made up my mind. I ain't lying, no more. <laughs> <laughs> we got to make up our mind first. You know, that, that we, we are not going to come to us. So these, these was deported. Now, it don't make a difference if you do right. It don't mean right things that can come to you. Mm -hmm. But your purpose is to do right with God. Amen. Now that's, that's our purpose. Make a difference what somebody say about you, talk about you. Don't you act like they do. Right. You have a purpose. Let me get off right. I can't get off your left.
bless you. Come on, man. <laughs> They took them into Babylon. The first thing they did, they changed the name. I got to get to the lesson, but like I said, if we don't get there, we will end the lesson. They changed their name. Uh, let's see. Daniel. His name means God has a judge. God is my judge. Changed his name to Belshazzar, which means the lady protect the king. Now, that's a different definition of this name. Hananiah means Yahweh has been gracious. Change his name to Shadrach, meaning I'm fearful of God. Michelle, who is God? What is God? Who, who is what God is? They changed his name to Meshach, uh, meaning I am despised, contemptible, or uh, humble before my God. And Azariah, Yahweh, as him. That was his name. That's his Hebrew name. They changed it to Abednego, meaning the servant of Nebo. So they changed their name. Um, we are not to be conformed to the world, but transformed. When they took them to Babylon, they want to conform them to their culture. And to their diets, to their language. So they change their name. Okay. That was okay. You know, you, you're in a foreign land, and you don't have a certain control. And they don't change their diet. So now these young men stood up and said, Well, hey, amen. <laughs> uh, if it would be okay with you, can we just. Stay with our diet, which is culture. We don't, and, and we don't want to be offensive. You know, some of us, we get holy, we get offensive. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't, we don't want to be offensive. But, but, but can we just stick with our diet? He said, well, wait a minute. Now, if I let y'all stay on y'all diet and y'all start losing weight and all that stuff, and the king ain't gonna like that. And then, and so, he so said, we tried out for 10 days. And so they tried it out. And they was fat healthier than, than all the Babylonians. And they said, oh, man, okay. Now, Brother Rock, they didn't come by. They didn't come by. Brother Carter, out there with them young men. They took three young men, well over in Babylon, and they still holding to their teaching. I said they were young men, 15, 16, 17. Somebody had been teaching those young men in Amen. Israel. Right. All right. They, they were steadfast in their belief, what their training they were brought up in. Mm -hmm. and, and they said, let us just stick with our food. But we, those are the three Hebrew boys. And my, and while I was studying this, I said, what about the three boys from Coleman? That's why I just, I, I was using, <laughs> Brother Carter, I was using me and you and Rob. What about three boys from Coleman? They, the king, the king brought some good food in there. The king, the king eat good food. Mm -hmm. They was giving them food from the king's table. I mean, for Carl, what are we going to do? <laughs> we probably compromised, but look, we're in a strange land around some strange people. Who going to know mm -hmm. if we get off our diet? Mm -hmm. We compromised there. What's, what's it going to hurt? Matter of fact, that food looked pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> We look pretty good. But they, they said, no, we, we, we don't want that food. Yeah. Try it out. In chapter 1, verse 17 to 21, Daniel and his companion are blessed and promoted. As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill and all literature and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. God blessed them. For being faithful. Amen. God bless them for not compromising. God bless them because he had a purpose. Mm -hmm. He had a purpose. And that purpose was to glorify God in a strange way. Someone passed out a week with me. They hung their instruments up on the trees. And we can't sing those songs of that. Yeah. God wants to be glorified. I don't care what you want. You got to glorify God, regardless of the circumstances. He is to get 
the glory. Okay. Now, we jump to chapter 2. Now, I'll our lesson start over in the middle of chapter 3. Chapter 2. In the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And his spirit was troubled that he, that his sleep left him. So he, so he had a dream. And, and he went to all of his soothsayers. He demanded to know the dream. But well, his problem is, he told them, I had a dream. And the dream bothered me, and I can't sleep. Now, I'm putting this my own way. Now, y'all tell me what I dreamed and what was the interpretation of it. They said, wait a minute, ain't nobody can do that. <laughs> and they, tell us a little bit. You know, ain't okay, when we go to them palm reels, and they ask you all them questions, and we be giving them the answers. You know, but they're going around and around. Well, this king, he, he said, no, I dreamed a dream. Y'all tell me what I dreamed and what's the interpretation. Well, ain't nobody can do that. That's right. well, we can't do nothing like that. But there was one. God had already blessed them because they were faithful. And God had gave them knowledge and gave Daniel the ability to interpret dreams and all that because God had the purpose. Come on. Yeah. So, <clears throat> God revealed never kept and then has a dream and his interpretation to Daniel. I'm trying to get to the lesson. Okay. Uh, what did he dream? Class. I don't want to do all the time. What was the dream? Now, we reread the story. What did he see in the dream? He saw an image in the dream. That this image head was of gold, his chest and arms silver, his belly and thighs were bronze, his legs was iron, and his feet part of iron and clay. And, he, and, and Daniel told him, and you watch until a stone was cut out of our hand, which struck the image on the feet, and the iron and the clay, and broke them into pieces. Daniel said, oh, well, King, that's what you dream. That's what you saw. Now, here's the interpretation of the dream. Ah, Brother Wall, I'll be out of compromise here. Oh, <laughs> no, the King got a lot of power. And you say, hey, that head of gold is you. Well, that's all right. But now, don't go no further with that. <laughs> he said, but they're going to come up another king. Right. After you. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he went through four kingdoms. I can't tell you all that story. Mm -hmm. But we've got to get to the lesson. But that, that was a dream. He said, man, that was it. This impressed the king. In chapter 2, 46 to 49, then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face, prostrate before Daniel and commanded that they should present an offering and incense to him. <clears throat> the king answered Daniel and said, Truly, your God is the God of God, the Lord of kings, and a revealer of secrets. Since you could reveal this secret, then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over his whole province of Babylon and chief administrator over the wise men of Babylon. Also, Daniel petitioned the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province, province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Because of these guys, faithfulness to God, God blessed them beyond now, he didn't bless them to stick their chest out. You have a purpose. The purpose is God's going to get the glory through the young men. When God bless you, it's not for you to take it all upon yourself, but it's to glorify God. And God is going to get the glory one way or the other. So he these young men are promoted. I I, I I used to hold this before. Now, sometimes you put a badge on a person and go to the head and go crazy. Mm -hmm. Now, give somebody a position to go, what God promoted you to glorify Him. He's going to get the glory through it. Mm -hmm. It's no different where you are, but the position is all right, God is to be glorified. Now, look at the king. He is acknowledging Daniel's God. 
and promoted things. We said, wait, wait, was, was this man converted? No. And no, he, he's not converted yet. Not here. All right. Today's text starts in the middle of chapter 3. So we're in chapter 3 now, so I got to start in chapter, chapter 3. I got to start the first part. Now, he had a dream that nobody interpreted Daniel. And Daniel told him that uh, you know, your wise men couldn't do that. I can't either. Give our gods, give you glory. See, nobody right. said we can't stick our chairs out. Right. He said, but I serve God mm -hmm. who can interpret. Mm -hmm. We have to, in all your ways, acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. Don't take God's glory on yourself. That's what we like to do. Yeah. We like to take the glory. God, give God the honor and the glory that's deserved of him. So, Daniel interpreted the dream. He said, you saw a statue of gold. This is important because I'm going to bring this in. He told him about this statue that he dreamed of. Now we're in chapter 3. And lo and behold, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold. Well, he showed me. Let me see. Today's scripture is the second part of the narrative that began in Daniel chapter 3. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, he reigned from 605 to 662 BC. 562. He erected a large image of gold at the plains of Dura. Chapter 3, verse 1. The location is suggested to have been several miles from the city of Babylon. Right. Now, there's a debate over how long it's been since chapter 2. He saw Daniel interpret that dream to go, and this, he goes out here and erects a statue of gold. Some said it's been a few years, some said it's been a long time. They, they can give me an answer in case how long it's been. But, but, but the thing is, is that he was, he was acknowledging Daniel's God when Daniel interpreted his dream. Now he goes out and built him a statue. But look how he built it. The whole statue in gold. In Daniel's interpretation, he said, King, you are the head of gold. But the other part was different. So, so what's the king thinking here? <laughs> he built his whole statue of gold right. saying that eh, if, if the head is gold and I was superior, mm -hmm. I'm going to build this whole statue of right. gold so there ain't no other kingdom going to take over. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm going to be it for life. Mm -hmm. Kingdom king for life. Mm -hmm. He built his whole statue of gold. That's right. Yeah. Well, now, when he promoted Daniel Shadrach, Meshach, and Bang, I can't even remember that easy. When he promoted them, what happened? What happened when, when you get some promotion? Sometimes pastors and people get jealous. I ain't even in church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I flew around and promote somebody, and you were on that position, and somebody else got promoted in, there's some jealousy going on. So ever since they were promoted, there's some, some stuff going on. Well, people don't like that, okay? So when he built this statue, and they have a dedication ceremony out there, and they said, now let me tell y'all something. When, when, when Brother Wyatt hit the keyboard, mm -hmm. and when Brother Kenny hit the drum, and Brother Wyatt hit a note on the bass, I want all y'all to fall down mm -hmm. and bow and worship this image. Now, needless to say, Brother <laughs> uh, Caleb, me and you, we would come by. <laughs> but the old boy, they not going to come by. We would say, we are a foreign land, and, and who going to care whether we bow or not? Anyway, why hit the note, Kenny hit the drum, Rod hit the bay, and everybody fell down. Except Shaq, Rackney, Shaq, and Pinkfield. Yeah. Yeah. They still standing up. Somebody wanted and told the king. How's <laughs> the phone start ringing? <laughs> Somebody wanted and told the king. But the king liked him for one thing. Right. He, he liked him. So he went up and said, hey, hey, guys, come on now. Somebody told me <laughs> that, uh, you know, y'all didn't bow. So look, do this for me. Look, when Ryan hit the keyboard, Kenny hit the drum, and Robert hit the bass, y'all fall down. 
Because <laughs> in verse 15, he told them, you know, I know who God is when we get to that. And uh, I said, we, we can't do that. Yeah. They, 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 we can't do that. Uh, verse 15 and 16 through 18, when you hear the music, fall down and worship him not. You will be cast into the furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? Mm -hmm. and you, you answer that. I won't know what you're going to do then. Mm -hmm. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your God, right. nor will we worship the gold image which you have set. Like I said, we have probably been compromising now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Who going who to know? And now I, I can, his kids like you, well, daddy and they ain't going to buy Everybody bowed. So you know, hurt us to bow too. But they were not compromised. Amen. So we talk about peer pressure. Some of our children do what the others do because of that pressure. Don't don't ever do what the crowd does. Amen. You you pray about that situation and you're gonna have the right answer. Make no difference what the crowd do. You do what God has instructed you yes. to do. That's right. It don't make no difference if the pastor bow. No, don't, don't mean you, Bob. That's right. Well, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's what you have to do. They say, now, I got to deliver but if not, we 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 not going not going to deliver. They refuse to compromise. Amen. In Acts five twenty nine, they told Peter and them, "Don't y'all go out preaching to this guy's name no more." And you know, we, we'll do a little bit and let you go. <laughs> Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God That's right, right. rather than man. That's right. He said, we, we're not going to compromise. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we're not going to buy king. I appreciate everything you've done for us and you put us in positions and all of that, but I have to draw a line here. <laughs> you know, we, we, we're not going to do that. We're not going to compromise. Joshua 24, the pastor read that last week. If it seemed even to you today to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your father served on the other side of the floods, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will not compromise. No? Not compromise. Church, we just got to quit compromising. I look at a, and I may be picking on some of y'all Republicans, but I look at a political party that's compromising. Well, so both parties, I put it that way. They were compromised for position, for wealth. And then we, we compromised to what? Brother, I don't know what led you to say that, man. We've been getting ring with Rock. I'm, I'm not compromising anymore. <laughs> and I don't blame you, Brother Hall. But, but, you know, we, we got to quit compromising all the time. Look, they was promoted that God would be glorified. That's our purpose in life, to glorify God. Look at this. King, if you, if you let us go, God is going to get the glory. That's right. Yeah. God's saying they're going to get the glory. glory. But why? <coughs> if, if you kill us, God's still going to get the glory. Yeah. Either way it go, God is going to be glorified. That's our purpose. That's right. That, that's our purpose. Yeah. To glorify God in life or even in death. In circumstances, it shouldn't change the way we act. Right. Right. If you kill us, we go, somebody going to say, boy, those young men, they, they held on to their faith all the way to the grave. Yes, and God is being glorified. Yes, if you let us go, we ain't bound down. They're going to say, boy, those guys in the face of death, they held. Right. They, didn't, they didn't waver. Right. So God is going to be glorified. Oh, can't we do that? Somebody lie on me and I get mad and go try to get even. Let them go and say, God, forgive them. 
God get the glory, bro. Wow, I still think about what you told me on, on, on my job. Wow, he, that's st still sticking with me. God will be glorified. Now, we have the lesson. <laughs> Rob, we just got to the lesson. <laughs> okay. Since they won't compromise and they won't bow, what's going to happen? Verse 19 for our lesson picks up. Well, no lesson picks up in the middle of a chapter like this. You just have to go back and look at the whole story. That's right. But verse 19 said, Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fear, and the form of his vision was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seventh time more than it would want to be. He got mad. He was upset. He was angry. He was full of fear. His facial expression changed. Oh, is that all I did for y'all? Y'all not going to bow? Do you know who I am? <laughs> they wouldn't bow. He got mad. Right? This is not the first time he got mad, angry, violent. When his soup sales couldn't interpret that dream, he got mad. I'll put all y'all dead. I'll put all y'all dead. Okay, so. The king, the king had some power. Somebody run the president wants that kind of power too. <laughs> this man had power. And he got angry and he told me to heat up the furnace. And y'all excuse me, they know this is a duck class. He just said seven times hotter. He didn't make it hotter than me. <laughs> and, and that's and it's going to you got to get it pretty hot to get because there's a there's a hell fire. We don't teach right. fire and brimstones anymore. It's all uh, Jeremiah was okay. <laughs> all right. Heat it up. Make it hot. He is mad. He is angry. All right. Stand. If you stand, if you don't stand for something, you'll die for nothing. How is he going to make this seven times hot? They said they didn't have any way to measure the temperature of the heat. Um, he just said seven denotes completion and fullness. And he said, make it hot as it go. I mean, to the maximum heat. Because I'm mad. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm wide on you now. We get in that, that me and Ben, we, we used to fuss about this hail all the time. We never did come to no conclusion on the past one. But we, 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 we didn't fuss about it. We just had a different opinion on him. But he said, mate, I, I want to burn. I want to burn faith. Okay. Make it up. Verse 20. He commanded the most mighty men that was in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. He got his mighty. He said, well, why did he do that? He, mad. He mad, but he called his he called his warriors. His, his strong military men. Man. You know what I mean? They said, did he think they gonna run or something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I would have tried it on. <laughs> <laughs> no. But he, he got his mighty men to bind him. And now, now we get into all this commentary language. The psalm said, well, see, you either had to go up to put them in the furnace, so you need some strong people to carry them up. And then they said, well, did they tie all of them together? And then instead of one, you got three, they bind them, and you got to carry all three of them, so you need to strong. I said, no, make a different. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't argue those points, but he used his strong men to bind and to cast them into the fire furnace. Oh. Then, 21, these men were bound in their coats, their hoses, and their hats, and their other, other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fire furnace. Some commentators said they were stripped of the clothes, put them in the furnace. They just said they left all the clothes on. And we put them in the furnace. Then they get into the theology of what these garments mean and all that. And so we won't go there. But they threw them in with all their clothes. 
And they said that all their clothes was flammable. And you throw them in with their clothes and all that, that's going to burn them up quick. That's going to help the heat. That's going to burn you even quick. Mm. But they refuse to compromise and see what it costs them. Sometimes when you stand for God, it don't mean everything's going to be hunky dory. That's right, yeah. yeah. But, but you can bet on this. That God promised he'll be with you. That's right. He, yeah. He's going to be there. That's right. He may not keep you from the furnace, but he'll go in the furnace with you. That's right. He may not keep you out of the storm, but he'll sure ride the storm with you. That's right. That's right. So that don't mean that everything will be going your way because you are remaining faithful. That's right. It don't, it don't mean that, but, but who is getting the glory? God. That's our purpose. Amen. Uh, why they say that? Keep going. That's our purpose. You know, God, regardless of where it leads you, God is going to get the glory. If you die believing in Him, God is going to get the glory. Okay. He's going to get the glory. Now, Revelation 20 and 10 said, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are. And she'll be torn in the day and night forever and ever. I, I just throw that note in there because I want to say that Nebuchadnezzar told him to keep the furnace up. Make it seven times up. <coughs> and he got his strong men and his strong men bound, bound and threw them in. And then the strong men that took them up there, they got burned too. Yeah. That may be my next 22. Therefore, because the king commander was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So the flame slew them too. Yep. Yeah. And, and really not much of Revelation. Do you know the last one going to be thrown in the fire? Mm -hmm. it, it's the devil. Mm -hmm. All the beasts and the false prophets will be in there. Then the last one gonna be the devil. So I don't want to compromise. <laughs> if, if I'm compromising, I'm gonna be in the fire, and the devil ain't even in there yet. <laughs> and I'd have compromised my life away with him, and he's still out there. He's the last one. The devil will be the last one thrown in. I mean, he can, he gonna get what's coming to him, but 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 but. We already in the fire burning. And the false prophets, we let them lead us astray. We in there, beast, false prophets, and here comes the thing the death. Okay. Okay. The guys that threw them in, they be burning. All what? Mm -hmm. But it, it was urgent. Verse 23. I'm going to tell you. We, we, we don't know okay. I've got to get somebody to say something here somewhere. Hold on, somebody got to say something. I didn't, I didn't imagine getting this far. <laughs> okay. 23. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fire furnace. So y'all down. Throw them down. That's it. Y'all won't bow down to my status. I bet I threw you down here. So he threw them down into the fire furnace. Hey, that's something. If <clears throat> we gotta be careful that if we don't bow, we'll be thrown in. If we do bow, we're gonna end up being thrown in. <laughs> so I I'd rather really stay with God. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it was in our Sunday school lesson that he'll be in the fire with us. That's right. It was in our, what Mary read there. I, I got a note somewhere on there. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be in the fire and we won't be burned. So Isaiah said, Isaiah 43. Uh, but so they fell down in the midst of the fire furnace, bound, hands tied, clothes on. 
furnace heated seven times hotter than it ought to be, and they'll throw in. Twenty-four. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was a stump and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did we, did not we cast three men bound into the midst of fire? They answered and said unto him, to the king, True, O king. Now, some said he bound them and tied them all up, all this. And this is going to make what God do even more miraculous. Right. Said that they threw them in there with their clothes and all that on. This is going to make it even more mm -hmm. miraculous. Uh, this is going to, God has a purpose mm -hmm. for us. And he has a purpose in what we do. But it's going to be, he will get the glory one way or the other. Yeah. You know, all we need to do is be faithful. Right. Right. Make no difference if you're in Corbin or you're in Babylon. That's right. Just be faithful because God wants the glory. Mm -hmm. And we don't want us to take it upon ourselves. We take, we, we take credit for everything. <laughs> and we'll acknowledge God. Yeah. God is going to get the glory. He was astonished. He rose up in hate. Now, <clears throat> some versions, Pastor, at this particular point, this verse adds something into the scripture about praise. And, 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 but, 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 and in this version here, it is just not in there. Why? They said that some version insert Nebuchadnezzar then heard singing, heard the voice singing and praising, and he was stuck. That's what caused him to go look. He heard the singing and the praying. He said it was angels. And, and so this is the, I, don't, I, don't, I, didn't, I should have write down what version you go in, but this is added to this text here. That, and that's what spurred him to get up and go look because he heard something. And he wanted to look. Uh, he rose up. He was alone. Rose up in hate and spake and said unto the council. Did we not cast three men in? They answered and said unto the king, True. And I thought about the young people saying, They said, True that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they said. Say. True that, yeah. <coughs> counselors, I don't tell you one thing about these counselors. They're not going to disagree with anything the king said. That's right. King said, Did we? Yes, sir. True. <laughs> yes, sir. They were compromised. Compromised. That's right. That's where our politicians now, they, they start compromising, they can't stop. Reading whatever. They go, yeah, that's, that, that's so true. Yeah, we thought that was three. Verse 25. Yeah. He answered and said, Look, I see four men loose, mm -hmm. walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the four is like the Son of God. Mm -hmm. He went and peeked in there and he said, Oh, I said, for him. I don't know what prompted him to go pee. You know, what stirred him? All I know is he got up and he went into the entrance. And he had a place that he could peep in and see without getting burnt up. <laughs> you know? So, so he, 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 you know. But now, y'all help me with the four. I know that. That's what he might get to. I don't know. He said, four of them look like the Son of God. Some said, the Son of of the son of a god. He believed in many gods. Uh, they said, is this possible? Is this a pre-incarnated Christ that he said? I'm going to stop right there. Somebody talk to him. <laughs> what is he really saying? This full person. Is it an angel? Or is it the pre-incarnated Christ? Some are well, what did he know about Christ? Or God or that's for nine days. This is not what he said. Hey, Kate, what is he saying? You don't know it. You, you don't want nothing. You don't want to help me out. Where am I? What's he saying? He put me on fire. Verse okay. 20. I'm going to go with verse 28. And for now, with the opportunity, what he's saying. Is that, that verse you said, Isaiah 43? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
what he said about, about God said he would be with us in the fire. Okay. It was it was the Son of God, but Jesus was just manifested in one spot when he became flesh. One spot. So you are saying that what Nebuchadnezzar is seeing is the pre-incarnated Christ. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he may not be able to explain it. Yeah. Yes. But he, he didn't did. come and just stay in one spot till he became Jesus, and then he got back to his glory the way he ever was. Well, I understand that part, uh, but so yeah. So, so what you're saying? Yeah, he was a pillow of cloud. He was fire. He led him out of Egypt. And he was in it. He was in the burning bush and all of this. But the Nebuchadnezzar is that's I'm trying to. Is that what Nebuchadnezzar? Well, he is? knew it. You know, he he knew it was it was more than okay. It burned off everything Nebuchadnezzar had put on them, but they clothes weren't burned up. All the bounds they put on was burned off. And it didn't smell like smoke. He knew it wasn't none of his soldiers. The soldiers ain't gonna look this glorified. Mm -hmm. Whoever this thing, whoever this being is, whoever this being is, look glorious. There's something, something strange about it. It's appearance. I think if you go back to the, the conversation that that uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had with the king prior to being put in the furnace, they told him mm -hmm. who would show up. So now he he you know he's able to do it even if he don't we know that he's able we still not gonna buy down so because of their faith I I feel that that God showed Himself in that form so that the king would know that because of their faith he wanted them he wanted them to see because if you go into verse twenty eight you'll see blessed be the God of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego because he comes back and, and confirms that in that next statement in verse twenty eight. I don't want to go there, but, but you should have read a little bit further. <laughs> it said, blessed. And we ain't in verse 28. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent who? His angel. His angel. Mm -hmm. And this is jumping ahead in my lesson, because Nick Wicked did it with Daniel in the line. But who was in the line with Daniel? Daniel said, angel. God sent his angel. Lock the lion's mouth. So we we at that point. Is it the pre-incarnate Christ that he's saying? Uh, it's God either way. It's God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if he said it ain't, it's God's angel. It's God. It's all God's doing. Right. I see both ways. I see both ways. I, I don't want to argue with either one of them. <laughs> I don't want to argue. <laughs> but I know God is at work. Right. Amen. And he's at work in our life. And, 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 and whether he's sent an angel or he directly to get involved, Amen. it is God's doing. Amen. And it is marvelous in yeah. our eyes. Mm -hmm. he, he, he don't fail. Yes, he said. Yeah, I, he, he, he be in the fire, you won't get burned. That's what he said. Really. Trust me. I, that's well, I got somebody to say a little something. <laughs> Anybody else want to comment on that word? Oh, brother, oh, brother Austin, I'm going to Okay. One second. We're about, about out of time, too. About that. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king councils being gathered together saw these men upon whom, whose bodies the fire had no power. Nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats charred, chained, or the smell of fire had passed on them. Their purpose was to glorify God, even in the fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. And because they glorified God, look at the witnesses. <coughs> They ain't saying they got saved, but God is letting them know that I am God. That's right. Yeah. And he's letting them know through, why you said, his instruments, his toys, as your son <laughs> told you. They, they, we are, he is the pilot and we are the clay. And he uses us whichever way he chooses. That's right. He chose these men and it was their purpose 
to go through the fire. But God is going to be glorified in what these young men do. He's going to be glorified in what you do when you can give him the honor and the glory. Yeah, that was, that was their purpose. Isaiah 43 and 2, I finally got to that note. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flames kindle upon you. That's Isaiah 43 and 2. It says you won't ever have a problem. There are problems going to come your way. But God is there with you. But you have a purpose in life. And that purpose is to glorify God. That's right. Make no difference what the circumstance is. You just remain faithful and glorify God. Verse 28, and we're close. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servant that trusted him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own. He said, Blessed. He said, Golly, God is getting glory here. Even the king is saying, Blessed be God. Question. Hey, Kate, is he converted right here? No. I I, I, no, we, we, he going to have to go through a little bit more stuff. Uh, but but he, at least he's acknowledging, hey, what these guys did over his life. Well, he's going to he gonna have to go out and eat bread like a cow for about 70 years. Well, God's going to finally get through to him. But what's your work? Your purpose is to live before him that he can see that God is God. Right. He is the only yeah. true. He is the most high. I don't, yeah. Yeah, and I never can ever believe that he, he is God. Y'all God, he keeps saying y'all that y'all God is something. Right. <laughs> Boy, he was powerful. But Nebuchadnezzar had a multiplexity of gods. So the other day, there's no one God. But the time is coming when he is going, he, he's going to be converted somewhere. He just like yeah. brought all that down. Robert tell us about how hard headed he was and all that. And, and how God had to make you grass sometimes, but but he can get your attention. Oh, I, I, I'm gonna get out of the way. Listen, man, turn back over you. Good morning. about just do the right thing. Don't do what other folks do. Do what's right. Do what's right. Just do what God wants you to do and everything will be all right. Don't look at your peers. Just do what God wants you to do and live right. Amen. Uh, any more remarks? If not, we have closing prayer. Thank you, Father, for your power to deliver from the schemes and tactics of fallen humanity. Give us the strength to stand on your word and the courage to bear faithful witness to the to the you despite dire circumstances. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen. amen.